Hello everybody, welcome to the Art Workshop. I'm your host Christopher Epling. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Park TV and we're so proud and, and happy to be able to offer this program for you. We're doing today a, a concept piece on, on different styles of cartooning. So if you have at home a piece of paper and a pencil uh, and an eraser too, of course, grab those things together and we'll draw together. Um, you may surprise yourself. Uh, breaking down art into its simplest forms and shapes uh, really, really gives a, a young artist insight on, on how to create a, a certain look or a certain um, uh, style of art or cartooning. And today's concept, we're going to be looking at different styles using one subject matter. Now your subject can be a lot of different things. Um, a person could do landscape drawings or scenes from nature, architecture. Um, your concept could, or your subject could be um, animals, or your subject could be, let's say, crowds. Uh, the subject could be literally anything. But to simplify this in, in terms of us choosing one subject to look at, I uh, had a question actually to come in from a student in our county asking about how to draw um, cats. They had a lot of difficulty drawing cats. So there's a lot of different ways we can approach this. So in today's art workshop, we'll be looking at the different types and styles of cartoon cats. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the types of materials that I have today. And, and that's something that, that I don't think a lot of artists do enough. If you are a young artist, or let's say you are, you already are involved with art and you create stuff um, on your spare time, and seeing what other people use is important. Some artists are very closed off about sharing with materials and their techniques. I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm all about the community aspect of art and sharing ideas and sharing concepts. And what works for one artist may not work for another, but it's good to know that so you may have it in your wheelhouse in the future be able to pull a certain uh, pen or pencil or technique with coloring and that may work for you. Now for, for myself today I've, I've pulled a few different items out and the first thing we're going to be using this is a mechanical pencil. You do not need a fancy mechanical pencil if you have one that's great. Uh, so a pencil nearby that's a good thing. Uh, keep that on hand. Um, an eraser you don't need a block eraser you can use a, an eraser on the end of your pencil of course. And then we're going to be also using a few different pens. Um, one of the pens that we're going to be using today is, is, is a, is a um, number um, three pen. Now what this means is, and I wanted to explain this before we get started, pen sizes come in different shapes. So the tips of a pen, if you look very close, you'll see that this tip here, as compared to the same brand of pen here, are totally different. They look different and they feel different and you can get different effects from using each one of these. This particular pen has a smaller line, so when I draw a line on a piece of paper, you can see how thin that is as compared to this pen, which has a thicker line. Now, you don't have to go and invest in a tons, ton of different pens to get these different shapes and um, different um, widths with your line. Um, you can actually um, invest in one particular pen that can do every bit of that for you, and we won't be using this today, but, but I do want to reference it. This is a nib pen. So if you think back in, and you've seen photos of um, um, back, in, back in history when someone would use a quill feather or a, uh, let's say a turkey feather even, you shave the end of that um, off and you get this uh, pointed tip. Now what happens is when you dip this in ink, think of sign the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which was all done in quill tip pens. When you dip this in ink, there's a reservoir that happens inside of this pen. So the ink is held up in the cylinder. So as you begin to write and you continue to write or draw, the ink is um, slowly um, moved to the tip and then uh, applied to your paper. This type of pen and, and, the, and the quill approach, you can get a variety of thickness. And we've covered this before in the workshop, but I do want to mention it today. You can also go as far as to get a type of pen that has the same tip as a quill, which this one does, but the ink is kept in a reservoir for you. Um, you just have to interchange that when it's empty and uh, you could keep going. So for travel, if you're drawing on the road, or um, let's say you uh, want to have a, keep a sketchbook, it's sort of hard to pull out a, um, a bottle of ink wherever you are and start drawing. So these are, these are important to have if you're interested in that. So our subject today are cats. So I want to start out by drawing a simple shape for you. And um, what I want you to do is to, to take your pencil at home and you're going to draw a circle, okay? So we're just drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Don't press down very hard on your paper, okay? We just want this general shape of a circle. Now once we have the general shape of a circle, I want you to come back up to the top and you're actually going to turn this into an egg shape, okay? So it's going to come up and then oval um, at the top here. Bring it back down so that it's just ever so slightly curved at the top. It almost 
starts to look like an oval in shape, but it's not. So once we have this general shape here, um, we'll go ahead now at the tip and we're going to put two uh, triangles on each side. Now this is the most simplest form of what we can um, generalize as a cat, okay? So we have two ears, what we see is the body, and then we can add the tail coming down like this, okay, from around the back of the cat. Now, when I show you this image or this shape, you look at it and you can tell without seeing all the details inside that this is, this is a cat. It could be a cat. But then when we go in and start to add more details, such as two ovals to make the eyes, so go ahead and draw those in. Okay, we have two ovals for the eyes and then we could put a small nose here. Then it starts to look a little bit more like a cat. Um, the shapes come together and you can tell. So this is what's known in art as abstract. Abstract basically just means that you can interpret what's, what the image is, okay? But it's using the least amount of, of lines as possible to, to uh, show that image or to reveal what that image is. So you can continue adding a few shapes onto the, uh, the image here to get the effect, maybe give some lines on the tail. And now we can see this looks more like a cat. Adding these small details in, even though this is a circle or an egg shape with two points, um, we could tell this, is, this looks like a cartoon cat. Now, the other end of the spectrum from here is to draw a realistic looking cat. So if we did a circle for the head here, okay, and then we bring the line down to form a longer um, egg shape or or almost like a, a teardrop, okay? And then we add the detail on top of this. Now a realistic looking cat, so almost, uh, now this won't be like a photo image, but it's going to be a lot more detailed than the first version, version we did. Uh, this is the other end of the spectrum, would be, would be a realistic drawing of a cat, okay? Um, so somewhere in the middle between this realistic looking uh, cat that that has all the shapes of what you would think a cat would have um, to this, which is a, a, a basically an abstract version of what the cat would look like. Um, that's the range we want to work in. We want to fall somewhere in between um, this cat over here that you could tell looks like a cat or what a cat should look like and, and then the cat over here that is more cartoon based. So how do we achieve that? How do we find some range in between these two shapes or these two um, um, representations of a cat and that's what we're going to work on today. There's been a lot of really really um, famous cartoon cats in history. You could think of Garfield, um, there's a particular cat from from um, Adventure Time that's a popular cartoon today but just to just to reference the abstractness of what we're what we're going for today I want to show you uh, this representation here. So everyone knows what a heart the shape of a heart or the symbol for a heart is. Something like that, right? So if I were to show you a square, and this square, let's say, is red, when you, saw, when you look at this square, you don't automatically think of love, but if I show, showed you a red heart, which over here, um, you know, you could say, hey, I, I know what that symbol is. Now somewhere um, in, in the middle, what if we had a real beating uh, heart, an image of, of a heart with a uh, all the arteries and um, coming out of it and the valves and stuff and, and the veins and whatnot. And if you saw that, you'd be like, oh, that's, that's terrible. I don't want to see that, right? But somewhere in between a realistic heart and a square, we've come up with this image that represents um, love, right? So that's really what we're shooting for today is to come up with a, um, a version of a, of a cat that, that's in between an abstract version and a realistic version. And there's no other um, uh, better representation of that in my mind than Tim Burton. So grab your pen and let's work together on achieving Tim Burton uh, style of a, of a cat. Now the first thing we're going to start off with is, is an oval. So go ahead and sketch the oval on your paper. Place it towards the top. You're going to leave room for the body of the cat to come down. Okay. Now you're going to skip down just a little bit here. Um, you could reference where I'm placing this compared to yours, and we're going to draw another oval. Okay, notice where the placement of these two ovals are. One is uh, landscape or long ways, the other is, is more um, uh, vertical. Okay, so 
between here and here now we need to fill in this shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the top oval and I'm going to put some big ears. So remember the triangle that we put earlier? Well, we're going to do something similar to that now, but it's going to be um, a little more style, stylistic. Okay, so you're drawing triangles, but notice how the shape curves in on each side, right? Once we have that, um, we're going to put a little more detail in. So you're going to draw these jagged lines coming down. So this is the cat's ears here, right? Tim Burton, whenever he uses um, his, his style of cartooning, he uses large eyes a lot of times on his, um, on his characters. So we're going to put a large eye here. Now this looks like the letter D upside down flipped on its side. You can see how that looks like a letter D, right? And then over on the other side of the cat's head, we're going to put another letter D. This one a little, little smaller, not exact shape of, of this one, but you can see how it's represented, okay? So now we have two ears and two eyes. What we could do from here is go ahead and build the rest of the face. Now, I want to bring this to a point on each side, here and here, okay? And then in the middle, we're going to draw the nose. And the nose is just um, a small shape that's going to be just between the eyes. Um, from there, then we can go ahead and add the, uh, the mouth of the cat on here. Now, Tim Burton draws a lot of very thin uh, characters, very, um, um, the, shape, the shape of them are almost look uh, a little mal malnutrition, but uh, the effect of it looks really cool if you pull it off. So now we have two eyes, the nose, the cat's mouth, okay? And we're going to connect this shape with this shape now. So going back up here, let's work on the neck. So bring this down and then into this shape here, okay? So it's got a really thin neck. Think of a cat, you'd see it. Halloween maybe, okay? Now, using this shape that we've already created, we're gonna build the body. We're gonna start over here where the side of the neck comes down and we're gonna draw the shape coming out, and back in, okay? This is the fur sticking out on the cat's chest, okay? Going back up to the top here, we're gonna draw some more hair sticking out, coming down, following the same shape we've used to create this oval, down to the bottom and stopping, okay? So there's a, there's a movement here with your line that goes out and then down. Notice about how far I've brought this line below this other representing the chest, okay? Now, we have the general shape that we need to go ahead and finish and we'll produce the legs and the tail. Um, starting first with the legs, you're gonna draw two lines coming down from up into the chest area, one here and one here on each side, okay? Just two lines. Once you have those two lines, you can add the detail in for the feet. So you may put some paws, then bring it back up, another paw here, and bring it back up, okay? So those two lines now are established, we can work on the leg. The leg is actually gonna come up like this, looks like a giant letter C, and then down to the back paw, which will be right here, okay? On this side, we have the same thing, the cat is setting down, so we can see a portion of that leg in the back. Now for the tail. The tail on this cat, remember the first version we did was very thick. The second version was more realistic. For this one, we're just going to put some jagged lines to represent the cat's tail. Okay, so it's not a solid shape, but it's a series of these jagged lines. We have everything we need now to go ahead and put the detail in. So we may put some straps on the cat's back coming over the shoulder, down the back of the cat, maybe on the legs too. So you may draw some stripes here on the front of the leg portion of the cat. Go back up to the top of the head. we we'll draw some lines coming down from the top of the head on each side and in to the eyes here. This part up here can be colored in later. We're gonna ink this in a minute so you can see how it really comes together. Now the eyes are gonna be really thin and remember the mouth coming up to the nose. So we have all the lines now together that represents our cartoon cat. Um, Tim Burton has a very uh, particular style that he uses and we're trying our best to, to, to show that style and now we're gonna ink it. So you're gonna need a pen, so grab a pen if you have one. I'm using this brush pen, you don't need a brush pen, but brush pens are, are good in the sense that you can make these very thin lines and then push down a little harder and you get the thick lines. Something similar to the nibs, but 
you, there's not as much control with, with a brush. Um, some of the masters in cartooning, going back to Charles Schultz, uh, Will Eisner, um, even Steve Ditko in early Marvel, these, these uh, professionals could really use the brush. It's something that it takes, it takes a lifetime to really master, if you ever, if you ever do master it. Um, I certainly haven't mastered it, but I, I love to try. So we're going to ink now over our lines. That's all we're doing. We're just putting um, emphasis on the lines we want to keep, right? And we're, we're going to not trace over the lines that we want to erase, okay? So this portion of your drawing is where you should be taking the most care, really, because um, to keep the lines that you want to keep and to trace over the areas you want to uh, make sure is in your drawing for the end product. So we're tracing over our lines. Notice how I didn't follow the exact line of this oval. I knew when I was putting the piece together, the drawing, what lines I wanted to keep. And that's something you have to work on. Um, Remember early on I said don't press down too hard? Well, the reason for that is here in a second we're going to be erasing all these different pencil lines that we're not going to keep. So we're lightly tracing over. Notice I'm not, I'm, it's almost like a sketching motion. I'm, I'm not trying to make this uh, a perfect uh, rendition of a cat or, or even trace over my lines um, perfectly. I'm, I'm, I'm tracing over the lines I want to keep, okay? The stripes going down the back, and then of course the stripes on the legs. And once you have all this together and you've actually finished inking it, you want to make sure and let it dry, as we always say. Nothing worse than um, finishing a, a drawing and you ink it, and then you go and you're wanting to see what it looks like without those pencil lines, and you hurry and uh, erase everything and smudge your ink. That's never fun, especially if you put a lot of time and effort into a drawing. Um, so we want to make sure that those lines are, are, have dried before you start erasing. Now, I also brought a pen today that is a, um, it's, it's a wash pen. So what that means, we've used this before in the workshop. Um, you get this nice shaded uh, tone, okay? This is a, a gray tone. Um, you can find this at, at any um, uh, art supply store. But what I'm going to do while my ink is drying is actually go over certain areas of, of this drawing. I'm going to sketch over them, or I mean, I'm sorry, color over them, uh, bringing out certain shadow areas and uh, especially those stripes that we've, we've placed on our drawing. Now, to mimic this at home, let's say you really want to add some shadow into your, into your drawing and some of this tone, and let's say you don't have one of these pins at home, um, a technique you can use is actually using a pencil because if you think about it, this almost looks like a, um, a pencil graphite shade, you can take a pencil and turn it on its side, actually use that to uh, shadow with, to do some shadowing, okay? And I'll show you in a second on how that would work. So hopefully our ink will be drying and will be dried by the time I finish with this uh, tone I'm putting over it, and we'll be able to erase those lines. Now of course the lines that I'm coloring over using this uh, tone marker, you won't be able to erase those. So if we're in a setting where we were doing this for, let's say, a project or, or even for a client or something, you'd want to be sure and wait and, and to the end after you ink and then erase to apply the tone. But for the purpose of a, our drawing today for our example, it's going to work just fine. But if you want to get this effect with a pencil, you can. Now this is a mechanical pencil, but it works the same if you have a number two pencil at home or, or just a general pencil. You take it and you put it on its side, okay? So that, so that the graphite is touching the paper at an angle. And then you start to sketch really lightly. The graphite will actually uh, blend too. I notice a lot of students in the schools, once they do this effect, they'll actually take their finger and they'll smudge it. Now they, they actually produce what's called smudge sticks that you can purchase, which is basically cardboard that you can hold and you don't get this on your finger when you do that. But um, if you really want to get this effect on your drawing at home, let's say you don't have um, a smudge stick, which you don't need um, necessarily, you can use your finger or you can even take paper towel. Um, take some paper towel and you uh, fold it over itself and, and twist it really tight so it's a, um, a shape like a, almost like a stick and then push that down on the paper 
and you can use that to smudge these lines. All we're doing when we're doing this is blending that graphite. So the graphite's like a powder after it gets onto the paper. So what you can do is actually just put down a couple of lines and use your finger and create that smudge effect doing that. So this is one version of a, of, of a cartoon cat and there's tons that we could reference. And what I want to do towards the end of the video now, hopefully you've drawn along with me on this, be sure to always put your name on your drawing too. But if you'd like to send this to me, I'd love to uh, show it on air on our next show, your version of this cat. Um, you can do that really easy. You just go to theholler.org. It's theholler.org. Search for the art workshop and you can send a, um, an image of your drawing and we'll show it on the air. Okay? So I want to try with the time we have remaining uh, to create another drawing using uh, the cat as our reference. And this will be um, um, a sketch from a well-known uh, character with Adventure Time, which we referenced earlier. So if you imagine now, and I'll, I'll show you once again where we're, trying to, where we're trying to go to, this original sketch of this cat, which is just an oval with two triangles, to the more realistic version of the cat, okay? Somewhere in between this range, we, we've created this, which is not a realistic looking cat, but it's not abstract either, okay? So we're going to try to go a little bit more towards the cartoon side of things. So we're moving more towards this version of a cat for this drawing. And you can draw along with me at home with this one too. Uh, towards the end, I may have to speed through the inking process, but it's the same as the others. Just be sure and trace over the lines you want to keep and avoid the lines you don't. All right, so the first thing you're going to do now for this version is you're going to draw an oval. I like using these shapes to help guide me. Don't press down too hard. Okay, we have the oval. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a second oval, but this one is going to be at an angle. See how we've done this? They're connecting. Remember the last version we did? The oval was here, the body was down here. This is connecting. Now once we have these two shapes, we can start to add in some detail. I'm going to put two, two ovals here to represent the eyes. Okay, and then up top we're going to put little ears on this one. It's going to have some smaller ears here and here, right? The sides will go to a point on each side. This is the cat from Adventure Time. Those of you who are fans of that cartoon, you can, you'll see this cat uh, wandering about in that cartoon a lot. So we're putting two lines going um, horizontal here um, and another line at the bottom, horizontal line. And then we'll put our little pupil for the eyes. Notice that these aren't the typical slanted cat, cat eyes we used before. These actually look more like pupils, um, human pupils, right? So in the middle now, we're gonna put another circle for the mouth, and this will be where we put our nose, and then this little shape here to represents the mouth, okay? Now you can see that this is, this is on the other end of the spectrum compared to what we did um, early on, okay? This is somewhere in between those two styles of cartooning. And you'll notice, uh, or I noticed a lot with students that students will usually gravitate towards a certain style of cartooning. So one may say, well, I really like the abstract version where it's just a, um, an oval and um, some triangles at the top. And then some students will say, no, I really want this realistic looking cat um, in my story. So it's up to you which, which direction you want to go with things, but you have a lot of room to work in. Good, good ideas to search for other artists' work. Go online. Um, look for examples of a cartoon cat. You'll see thousands and thousands of different interpretations of what a cat looks like drawn in this style. So the tail comes around. Notice this tail looks a lot uh, more similar to the tail we first started with. And then we draw our lines in. So the generalization of this is that you want to try to get an effect that represents something. So when you look at it, you say, that looks like a cat. Um, with the minimal lines as possible. Cartooning isn't realism, so it's not like a painting of a cat or a portrait of a cat. Um, it's, it's a style of art that represents what an image will look like, but it's not an exact representation, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. So we can put our stripes at the top, similar to the other, on the side here too, okay? And now, you grab your ink pen, and I think we may have time to ink this together. Now remember, when you're tracing over your lines, 
This is the time where you want to trace over the lines you want to keep, avoid the lines you don't, okay? So for instance, this giant oval that we created first or second that overlaps with the head, I won't trace over this. I just want to keep the lines that, that I want to have in my finished drawing, okay? So I'm tracing over the lines, being very cautious of tracing over the ones I want to keep, avoiding the ones that I don't. Now these ears are a little different than the other versions that we did earlier. Um, somewhere in the middle, okay, it comes to a point on each side like this. Now the eyes are certainly different. For the first version we did was just basic um, circles. For the second version, more realistic. The third version was a cartooning style somewhere in between and this one falls a little bit more towards cartooning, the cartoon style of a cat, but you can see how the effect comes across. Okay, then the nose. Ink that in, a little shape for the mouth. This is actually the circle that I'm drawing around the mouth will um, be white, okay? And then the rest of the cat, besides the belly, will be gray. My goal for this workshop was to show you cats being drawn in different cartoon styles um, on a range from realistic looking to completely abstract. And if you've drawn along with me today and let's say a certain style has uh, you've gravitated towards that style more then you know a little bit more about yourself as a cartoonist what sort of cartoonist you would like to be or where you fall in with your interests okay and that's the style you should try to uh, emulate go online see other artists creating work and try to draw what they're drawing that's how you get better um, art classes are wonderful but actually doing the work will help you to become more and more, um, um, more and more talented as, uh, in terms of your skill, skill set with drawing, okay? And um, so we're gonna add our details in. Now what we could do, since we have all this together, is use our tone toner again, and we're gonna go back and put some um, gray into these areas that, that we want to have highlighted, okay? And then for this version, we'll put a down the entire back to the feet and we may just be able to erase our lines in our last drawing now hopefully they've they've dried we're gonna add tone around the tail and again you could do this with the pencil if you don't have that at home alright so I hope you really enjoyed the workshop I'm gonna erase these lines really fast as we're finishing so you can see what this will look like Again, please, if you've uh, drawn along at home with me, um, send me uh, examples. Let me see it. I'd love to see what you've come up with and what you've done. Um, we'd like to thank Pike TV for making uh, the art workshop available for you. Um, I, love, uh, I love producing the show with Pike TV, and, and uh, it's been a real joy. So please, if you have drawn along, I'd love to see it. I'd love to share your work on, on the show here, and I'm sure the audience would love to see it too. Just jump onto the holler.org and you can upload that link as an image file and we'll share it right here on the show. Um, lots of different styles in cartooning. Where you fell on today's spectrum is where you lay and I would work in that, uh, in, in, in that method and that style as much as you can and you may end up surprising yourself. Um, so thanks so much for tuning in today and as always, uh, I'm Christopher Epling and keep drawing.